So your, your intro volume be welcome to Cromer Park on Sydney's beautiful northern beaches for NPL Women's New South Wales round five action. So that's normal. Then, so if I go up here, here's a chance for Manly. And that's a wonderful save from Anna Norton. I don't know, absolutely no idea how she got to that one, but somehow, etc. Yeah, so.
Portuguese experience within the Northern Beaches. Combining a wide range of knowledge and understanding with a local and personal touch, Upstate Real Estate delivers five-star service with the drive and passion that your property deserves. Featuring our very own Johnny Hall, Upstate has one goal for you, to help you find yourself in a better place. So give Upstate Real Estate a call on 9971 or visit www.upstate.com.au. Upstate Real Estate, cloud partners of your family nine Good afternoon, everyone. We hope you're enjoying the long weekend, and we hope that this four-day break view is going as well and looking as good as the weather we've got here on Sydney's northern beaches. It's an absolutely gorgeous day and the perfect setting for round five NPL Women's New South Wales action between Manly United and the Black Town Spartans. Eric Shibihana here and made the trip up to the northern beaches to Kerma Park for today's game. And this venue looks absolutely stunning as always. For the hosts, Manly United, it's been late drama in their last two games. Firstly, two weekends ago, a late comeback to turn a loss into a win against their neighbours, Northern Tigers. And then last weekend, it was Everly Manette's stunning 93rd minute equaliser that rescued a point for the Queens of the Northern Beaches against Northwest Sydney Spirit. Wow. For Black Count Spartans, this young team, they're trying to bounce back from a heavy defeat down on the south coast. The last time out against four hours win race. But they do have hope. And two weekends ago, their 6 0 win away against the Mergen Jet shows that when it's on, it's really on for them in an attacking sense. So, for those of you perhaps less familiar with these two teams, traditional kits for both the dark blue jerseys or the dark blue kits for Mount United, the orange jerseys for Blacktown Spartans. And the whistle is in the mouth for today's referee, Mia Velarde. Speaking of, there's the whistle. Away we go. Where would you rather be than at an NPL ground watching NPL Women's New South Wales on the Catholic Easter weekend? And for Manly United, two wins, a draw and a loss from their opening four games in a decent position as we head into round five. And I will take you through the two lineups. This is the appropriate break in play, but he's Phoebe Gilbane twisting and turning and a low ball into the middle. It was Daisy Arrowsmith making the run at the near post. It's good goalkeeping from the Spartans at the shot stopper. Anna Norton, so I'll try and sneak through the Manly starting lineup at least while I got the time. In goal for them, number one, Nicole, Sim Nicole Simonson. Then number two, Phoebe Gilbain. Number three, Grace Arnold. Number five, Nicole Stewart. Number six, the captain, Ruby Jackson. Number nine, Emily Minette. Number 11, Tegan Biasi. Number 12, Ariela Cabezas. Number 16, Daisy Arrowsmith. Number 20, Sian Bazanich. And number 34, into the starting lineup for today, Corinne Winkler. 
Well, for the Spartans, in goal for them, number one, Anna Norton. Number two is the captain, Philippines International, Chantel Maniti. Then number three, Charlotte Owen. Number four, Hope Clure. Number eight, Helena Daniela. Number 11, Kit Wallet and Carly. Number 12, Charlotte Carroll. Number 17, Brittany Duggan. Number 26, Diana Corona. Number 27, Alyssa Unsad. And number 31, Alyssa McKenzie. And Winkler just not linking up with her central defensive partner for this afternoon, Grace Arnold. So uh, the schedule makers have decided to utilize the long weekend to spread out the games a bit. This is one of three NPL Women's New South Wales games being played today. As that will actually run out for a corner, so an early corner for the visitors. Uh, kicking off at about the same time, uh, down at Peter Moore Field, it was Sydney Olympic versus Bulls FC Academy. Then at the very strange kickoff time of 5.10 p.m. at the Arctic Circle, it's Gladesville Ravens versus University of New South Wales. So I'll run you through the four games that'll get played tomorrow uh, when I get the chance. But first, corner kick for the Spartans. It's up. So is Nicole Simonson, and that's it against, I think, the back of one of her teammates. Now there's a long-range shot, and Arrowsmith, quick as a flash, to close the shot down, uh, preventing any kind of second effort for the visitors. And it's Maniti shepherding that one out of play. The Spartans uh, run through Manly's record in the opening four games. Yeah, Spartans, as I mentioned, they did have uh, that round three 6 0 win away to Emerging Jets at Lake Macquarie Regional Football Facility. They sit on four points as we head into this round. Uh, their other points earned in a round two draw, two all against Northwest Sydney Spirit. And uh, that's coupled with an opening day defeat to Bulls FC Academy. And as I mentioned earlier, last week's defeat to Illawarra Stingrays. Meanwhile, for them, their bench options, Michaela Kent is the backup keeper. The other options are Isabel Wilson, Angelique Lynch, Poppy Channing, Despina Vasiliadis, and Alana Petitza. Arnold playing it back to Winkler. So for Corinne Winkler, I mean, signed. Corinne Winkler signed from the local Premier League. Well, at least that was her most recent club where she played for the 2023 All-Age Women Champion Champions winners, C4th FC. But she has spent time previously uh, with Manly United, Corinne Winkler. And in fact, four years ago, Corinne Winkler, a member of Manly United's grand final winning team when Manly United shocked the entire league by uh, defeating Sydney University at Valentine Sports Park. What a glorious day that was for the Northern Beaches team. And that, in fact, did end a... I believe, if memory serves me correctly, a 32-game undefeated run that Sydney Uni had going into that game. i will show you how well Manly United played that very warm October afternoon four years ago, and Corinna Rinkle was there. Now, a bit of a turnover, and then it was Mkali trying to bounce it towards a runner in the middle. Trying to keep it alive there is McKenzie. Couldn't wrap a boot around it, so goal kick. And meanwhile, uh, for the hosts, Manly United, uh, their coach, Tom Hopley, he can choose from... If he wants to make changes, the backup keeper, Christy cannon -Giesa. There's also Gemma Woolley, Alexia Fauna, Caitlin Jarvey, Leah Burton, and the junior Matilda, Sienna Dale. Simonson going long. That's Duggan with a foot to it. Read the trajectory of the ball are better than Emily Minette. Now, Biasi. Uh, did have some threatening runs down the wing. Uh, no, not seven. My apologies. Eight days ago, when Manly United drew two all with Norfolk Sydney Spirit at the Arctic Circle, she was on the right hand side, if memory serves me correctly, from watching that game. But Tegan Biasi, at least, starting on the left hand side of Manly's formation. And she might get on the end of this one, too. So Maniti's got to hurry. So does Norton. That's excellent goalkeeping from Norton. Sending it a long, long way away from her goal. Five and a half minutes played here at Chroma Park. Eric Subihano on the mic for the Football New South Wales YouTube page. Thanks for joining us. The score is currently nil all between Manly United and the Spartans. Bazanic spins back towards Arnold. And, and Tom Hopley, I can see, at least compared to, compared to how uh, he lined his team up. In the previous round, a couple of changes. I can see the captain, Ruby Jackson, has moved from central defense into central midfield. 
for this game, and that's what's made the space for Corinne Winkler to enter the uh, starting lineup. Now, tempted switch. Biasi might get to this before any of the Spartans. But the visitors still have it. And then Winkler sends it, well, I was about to say, just a clearance, but she's actually done well to find Biasi. Anyway. Oh, that could be an interesting ball. And Nicole Stewart has made a great run. She's in behind. Here's Stewart, one on one. And Nicole Stewart is denied by an excellent save from Anna Norton. The first real chance. What a through ball that was from Emily Minette. And the eyes would have lit up not just for Stewart, but for all of the Manly United faithful. Anna Norton got the positioning spot on. She stood tall as long as she could. And it is an excellent save from uh, the Spartan shot stopper. But danger's not over for the visitors. Here's the corner coming up from Cabezas. Aimed far post. Jackson will get on the end of it, lays it back. Bazanic helps it goalward, but that is a rather less stressful task for Norton as the ball goes wide. Now, yes, back to my earlier thought. Uh, the Monday games, or the games you can watch tomorrow on the Football New South Wales YouTube page via the live tab. So 4.45 p.m., it's Football New South Wales Institute versus RPL Icart from Valentine Sports Park. That'll be called by Dave McDonald. And I'll hold that thought as it's over Stewart, and again, that'll be an easy catch for Norton. Then two games at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Firstly, MacArthur Rams and their incredibly good-looking coach, Stephen Peters. They host Northwest Sydney Spirit, one of Peter, Stephen Peters' former clubs. That's 5 p.m. And also at 5 p.m. tomorrow, Sydney University versus Illawarra Stingrays. And at 5.30 p.m. tomorrow, as Jackson finds the open player, Grace Arnold, 5.30 p.m. tomorrow from North Taramara Recreation Area, it's Northern Tigers versus Emerging Jets, and called by, well, very welcome, new addition to our commentary team, Annabelle Banfield. Actually, in a brief chat with, a very brief chat with Annabelle, as Ira Smith finds Minette. And there's the run from Stewart, another good run. So Spartans need to scramble a little bit. Stewart assessing her options to the far post. And I think that was Charlotte Owen preventing the ball from getting to Biasi. Gilbane. The one-two with Stewart. And that cross is deflected behind for Manley's first corner of the game. Looks like, actually, my apologies, that would be her second, of course, because Cabezas has taken one from each side, or will, in a couple of moments. So Anna Norton being crowded by, I think that's Biasi and Arrowsmith, uh, the taller players, especially Winkler. Look for her in the air. She's a very, Corinne Winkler, a very good aerial target. So is Emily Minette. And here's the delivery from Cabezas towards Minette, and she didn't get the contact she wanted, just kind of skimmed off the side of her head rather than the front of her head, the forehead. So the Spahns are surviving, and now, decent run from Mankali, but Winkler, who actually covered the run well having just been in the box as an attacker now Stewart up against Umsad and Stewart will settle for the throwing as in could settle for conceding the throwing Owen uh, looks like she'll Charlotte Owen will perform the fullbacks duties launching it this one well, I was about to wonder if she had a long throw it doesn't look like that's what Spartans are preparing for and that, a loose touch, and it ends up as a goal kick. By the way, of course, um, yeah, so all the games I mentioned, both the games, the three games today, including this one and the four games tomorrow, of course, you can watch them on the Football News FL's YouTube page. Also have um, midweek action for various reasons. Uh, games having to be postponed. Minette hooks it over her head, and now Biasi is going to put Charlotte Owen under pressure. Owen finds the sideline. Yes, we actually do have a stream from League One Women's, the second tier, on Wednesday, the 3rd of April at 8 p.m. down at Harry, Harry Denning, Sutherland, Sutherland Strikers versus Interlines. That'll be called by Melissa Musket. Now room for Bazanich, who has a go, and Sean Bazanich hits the bar. Oh, it was dropping. Anna Norton going full length, and from a manly perspective, didn't drop quite enough excellent technique from 
Sian Pazanic there really drove through the ball and she was inches away from opening the scoring. And of course, yeah, so I've mentioned the Wednesday stream, Sutherland Strikers versus Interlions, called by M Melissa Muscat, 8 p.m. Wednesday. And then on Thursday, the 4th of April, we have a catch-up game from the washout a couple of weekends ago. It's Thursday, 4th of April at the odd time of 8.05 p.m., Illawarra Stingrays versus Gladewell Ravens. Not sure who's calling that one, but it's down on the south coast, so I do hope we get to hear the dulcet tones of Wollongong Saxboy, otherwise known as Thomas Phillips. Gilbane, the one two with Stewart. Now, not much room, but there is enough to find Minette running into space, and she will keep this in play. Now, Biasi ran to the near post, and it was just overhead, but a clever run from Biasi, and also safe hands from Anna Norton. Now, Cabezas. Down the line to Biasi. And then, well, it's, the tackle's flying in, so we'll have to see that kind of intensity. A minute back to goal, laid it off, and then didn't. Well, nice the idea, because Biasi is making a very clever run in behind. And uh, nil all at the moment. All right. I don't think it'll finish nil all the way both of these teams are attacking because there's some very nice and swift passing moves uh, being done by both teams. Yeah, it's Cabezas retrieving the ball. And by the way, back to my earlier point about Annabelle Banfield, who is calling tomorrow's game at 5.30 p.m. between Northern Tigers and Emerging Jets. Yes, I did have a very brief conversation with Annabelle at... Actually, I'll have to hold that thought again. As Arrowsmith is into the box, runs into Meaty, runs through Meaty. Daisy Arrowsmith scores. It's a wonderful individual goal. And Arrowsmith has scored for the third game in a row. It's 1-0 to Manly United. And that was absolutely fantastic from Manly's number 16. She was allowed to turn. Arrowsmith found a space between Spartans defense and midfield. Breezed past the challenge and slammed the ball home. And one of this competition's top goal scorers over the last several years has done it again. Daisy Arrowsmith putting Manly United 1-0 in front. There you go. I was wondering how long it was before he saw a goal. The answer was not very long at all. Now, Cabezas inching forward, inching a little bit too far forward for the referee, Mia Velarde's liking. Now, Manidi, I think she, oh, she's actually, see, that's probably just enough of a job done there in a defensive sense from Manidi. Preventing them running through, but now it's Biasi who can run into the left side of the box here. Biasi cuts inside, and Minette charges down the attempted clearance. Now Bazanic, it's over. And he can see what she was trying to do, put the top spin on it to keep it down. Didn't quite keep it down enough, and Manley certainly not resting on their laurels. Pushing for a second, not long after scoring the first. Biasi beats another challenge, gets past Owen and past Duggan. Biasi tried the low ball across the six-yard box. Orange jersey's in the way at the expense of a corner kick. signal from Cabezas. 
everyone back for the Spartans. It goes near post and is put behind. So Manly beginning to rack up the corner count. Although corners don't necessarily mean goals, it must be said. Uh, the, game, the men's game I called yesterday, Sydney Olympic versus Wollongong Wolves. Wolves, I think, got 12 or 13 corners, didn't score from any of them, even though they did score three goals yesterday. Stewart turns past the defender. She crosses, and oh, this could be dangerous for the Spartans. Minette heads over. Oh, that Spartans defender stretching. She did get a touch on it, almost inadvertently flicked, the, flicked it on towards an opponent. Emily Minette heading over. And they certainly, from the looks of things, have their tails up after that a goal from Daisy Arismith. That is what separates the two sides here at Corner Park. Manly United leading a bite of goal to nil. aimed at Stewart or Minette and it dropped between Manley's number nine and number five and Manley will get a throw in in opposition territory oh, yes, 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 and that is uh, sent out right next to the corner flag by Miniti so attacking throw in very attacking throw in or a very attacking position, should I say, coming up for the hosts. Now, the defending pinned up against their own corner flag by the Spartans. And they're there. Yeah, something's never changed. The quick throw down the line. When in doubt, throw it down the line. You could usually get 15 or 20 meters, just like what happened there. Although, uh, that's being cleared, actually, into the far post, the bistro opposite, or the bar and bistro opposite us. So forward back to the home side. <coughs> now, it's could open up. Grandstand side, and it's a big run from Alyssa McKenzie. Winkler's out to try and close her down. Header from Gilbane, and uh, snuck past Cabezas and uh, past Carroll. Uh, Bazanich playing it forward. Uh, Stewart tried to use a body, but lost out to Corona. Grace Arnold running down at the far post side of the field. Then. Stewart in his room. Very entertaining game, this. Nice tempo, and I think obviously we're past the warmest part of the day. And especially as that shadow continues to lengthen and the sun sets behind us here in the Chroma Park grandstand. It's going to be pretty conducive conditions to keeping up a good tempo for the whole of this game. Stewart clipped. Yes, she was. And the other singling oh, and whistling for the free kick. So I wonder if 
Everyone was expecting the direct ball into the box from Jackson. He said it comes from Arnold and Norton a long way out and doesn't get a hand on it. So she's out of position. But the cross, yeah, not finding any manly players to take advantage with the keeper off her line. Insad looking to hold it up. She's outnumbered by blue jerseys. He hasn't given it up though. That's nice work from Insad. And now a through ball, but Simonson. Hand up, universal signal for, I got this, relax. And she will eventually pick it up. See, looking ahead to games coming up uh, for Spartans after this. Uh, back at their home, back at Blacktown Football Park. On the next two weekends, so Sunday 7th of April, they host Sydney University. And then on Sunday the 14th of April, they face a side containing quite a few ex-Spartans. And that, of course, is Arpia Leichhardt. The defending premiers and... Uh, for winners of the Ignore World Sapphire Cup, which is a great competition, by the way. About time that Football New South Wales women's competitions had a knockout cup of their own to match the other state federations. I feel like I've won that last year. And by the way, of course, all NPL teams will be entering this one in the third round. We did see during the week the draws for rounds one and two, which contains all local association clubs who entered, plus uh, clubs from the second tier, League One Women's. will really take off and get even more interesting once NPL clubs like these two are involved. Cabezas not really ta taking it or biting on any of the fakes from Insad. Winklers across as the second defender and the two-on-one works for the hosts. As they that goal kick. So let me try this Annabelle Banfield story for a third time. I should have enough time to get this one away. Yeah, I met Annabelle at the season launch. Very brief chat. She expressed the desire. And I said, I want to do commentary. And I told her, you should tell um, our med football New South Wales media manager, like right now. So she did. She went straight to Mark Stavroulakis, the Golden Greek, and said she wanted to do commentary. And now she's in the commentary team. So there you go. That's what happens when people listen to me. Good things happen. Here. The RC passed Duggan, but not passed the covering defender, who is Charlotte Owen. Now Cabezas, under pressure from McKenzie, plays it into touch. Short options there, but he said, aims for the halfway line. Gets towards inside, help, trying to help it on for McKenzie. And, uh, Jackson's in there. Spartans will keep the ball. You can hear, it's always good when you're same side as the two technical areas you can hear instructions from both sets of coaching staff uh, if they yell out loud enough and they can hear Tom Hopley uh, telling these Manly players Manly United players to watch for the long throw speaking of Cabasas goes for distance a couple of touches takes it towards Minet now does it open up? That's good covering from Bazanich to get in front of Mkhal. Then she inadvertently got in the way of a clearance. So Bazanich plays it towards Jackson. Spartans had to weather a real storm after conceding the opener. But uh, you can see the good intensity there, not letting Manley play it out. So now, here's Owen. distance will they be on this? Uh, Grace Arnold breaks that up. 
you know, upcoming fixtures for Manly United. Well, it's a massive day for the club in seven days' time, Sunday the 4th of April. The club has been promoting uh, their Back to Manly Day, which will feature all Manly United teams, as in senior women, senior men's, girls' youth league, boys' youth league, boys' sap, girls' sap, all playing at Cromer Park on the same day. So the club will be utilizing all four, four of the five fields here at this complex. And the game's playing pretty much from 8th, eight, memory serves me correctly, 8.25 a.m. onwards. It's culminating in the, men, the women's first grade teams and the men's first grade teams playing back to back on this field here, the main field at Corona Park. So the Manly women's team, in the, on the Sunday 7th of April, they will host Football New South Wales Institute at 3 p.m. That's followed directly after that at 5 p.m. by the Manly United men's first grade team hosting Western Sydney Wanderers Academy. That's a little, that's a homecoming for at least one Wanderers person. That being Wanderers Academy first grade coach Andrew Christensen, who is a former Manly United coach. So amazing how the stars have aligned to have some kind of Northern Beaches influence in the visiting team for that game. The men's first grade game here in seven days' time. As Owen uh, launches the ball back into play, but doesn't result in any kind of attack. And that is... Uh, I, don't know. I was wondering about that, and... Leo Vallado of the same mind. The initial signal for Spartans throw. It's been overruled. But Manly ended up taking the throw. Inside, looking for runners. That's uh, closed down by Winkler. And Jackson, the Manly skipper, plays it to second. Owens has certainly got a lot of throw in practice, if nothing else, based on how things are going in this first half. Again, Manly prevent a, a, a kind of dangerous, more dangerous ball coming into the middle. Winkler strong in the tackle against them, Carly, and now Kabersas decides nothing forward of her, so she just goes back to Simons. Manly finally cross halfway. Arrowsmith giving Minette something to chase. Daisy Arrowsmith and Emily Minette really being the dynamic duo for Manly United in recent weeks. They've scored in each of Manly's last two games. And of course, as we saw, Daisy Arrowsmith has scored in this one. Now Biasi against Duggan. Biasi has won the throwing. And they're keeping it down at the northern end of Cromer Park, the canteen end, or the scoreboard end. I suppose you could call it a few names based on what we can see to the left of the camera here. Uh, Cabezas uh, didn't keep it in, but was offside in any case. So just uh, close to the half hour mark here at Cromer Park. If you've just joined us, Eric Subihano on the mic here for round five NPL Women's New South Wales action. The score is currently. Manly United won, Black Hand Spartans nil. Daisy Arrowsmith with the only goal so far. And that now means she scored in three consecutive games for Manly. Now Minette looking for Stewart and Corona. Actually, good positioning, good use of the body as well. And the Spartans left back. Manidi. Sends it forward. Was returned. Manly now in the ascendancy for this particular phase of play. Although that's good organization from the Spartans to force it, the ball back to the center backs. Here's Jackson. Throws down quickly. Steps past the tackle. And bounces it off Arrowsmith. Now Cabezas. Yes, he cuts inside as Cabezas overlaps from left back. Now Arrowsmith looking to switch the point of attack. Corona gets a foot to it. Oh, excellent tackle. Cabezas sliding in there, doing it nicely. Oh, 
It's lacking a little bit width for Manly. So when Simonson sent it straight to the Spartans. It's up and into the box. Musad will try and keep it alive here. And as Manly double up. And after all that, corner to Spartans. It's delivered into the middle and onto the roof of the net. So yes, after Manly United, they play football New South Wales Institute here, seven days time. And looking ahead to their next two games, it'll be at least in a competitive sense, their first, the club's first ever trip to the Village Green, I think. I think that'll be their first ever trip to the Village Green to play newly promoted University of New South Wales. That's on Sunday the 14th of April, and then on Sunday the 21st of April, Manby United back here to host Sydney Olympic. Both of those games kicking off at 5 here. Stewart tried to change a pace, get past the tackle, and was that Corona again? I think it was, so that was a very nice tackle from Diana Corona. <coughs> Stewart, outnumbered there. Carroll. Carroll inside. They're trying to get the ball to Umsad and the Spartan center forward position as quickly as possible. Didn't work out this time. They might try again. And Carly's up to help her. So Arnold is a bit over her head and to a little bit of hesitation there. And then Spartan's free kick. So remember, is this something that will go straight into the middle? The delivery does go straight into the middle, headed away by Gilbane. And Harris Smith towards halfway. Now, it might break for Minette. And Minette has Stewart ahead of her. Stewart trying to stay on side here. And does make it to Stewart. Back to Minette. Can these two hold it up long enough for the cavalry to arrive, so to speak? Here's Arrowsmith. Looking for Minette again. And now he's still keeping this going. Staying persistent. Now, Jackson. A little bit of an awkward one there, which allows Carol to step in. See, I mentioned earlier how good the tempo is. Well, both of these teams looking for quick counter attacks that appears to be the approach. So, you know, it's a case of centre backs and goalkeepers having to stay alert when their team has the ball because. Seeing if whether you're wearing blue or orange out there today, from a, a little bit of scrambling required when there's been a quick turnover. That's for both teams, so credit to the way those these two are attacking. As it's Stewart, Manette making another run, but Stewart moving centrally before you know, via Duggan, she finds Manette. And now back to Stewart. I think Stewart was looking for Biasi, who'd you know, run inside all the way from the left wing. Gilbane. Gilbane loses out and Carly smart layoff and then oh, so they had family defender stepped up there but then Spartans gave it away so here are the hosts and Biasi now she's all the way on the right hand side and it's across it's going to be over Minette Cabezas trying to make a play at it and Mackenzie I think I'm sink for she pulled her foot away from it. Uh, she wasn't well bounced. Probably might be for the best that she didn't swing at it. She could have. It felt like she was going to have an impact. One of those embarrassing air swings, but so it's probably just as well that Mackenzie just didn't bother trying to clear it. And all as well that ends well. And an order catching the cross that eventually came in. Stewart. Now Minette will get onto this and 
Biasi is the option in the middle. Minette to the byline, and then ooh, one of those nightmare ones for defenders when they're facing their own goal. But Maniti has played it behind for a corner kick, and by my very manual count, that is Manly's fifth corner of the first half. Cabezas delivers to the edge of the six yard box. Great delivery, and oh, I think he was sneaking in that far post, but actually, yeah, the home fans got excited, but actually ended up not quite the pace on the ball to trouble Anna Norton, so mm, relatively comfortable save for Norton. Biasi uh, testing Owen there. And, uh, another throw. And they utilizing the wings very nicely in this first half. <coughs> and Lynette, now Gilbane is, is playing it right back, but found herself more central for this phase of play. And Stewart. And yes, got a body in the way. It'll be a free kick. Jackson is the set piece taker this time. Manini's knee. Manini heads again. It's Winkle who was up for the set piece. Trying to keep the move alive. Bill Bain. A couple of players hit the synthetic turf and now Biasi could be in behind her. Oh, flags up. Flags up. And by the way, I have realized that I forgot to give the assistance a shout out. So yes. Calling that offside, assistance on the far post side of the field is Blake Sanchez Cruz. Blake, sorry, Blake Sanchez Cruz. The assistance on the grandstand side is Isabella Vitkovsky. Norton going short this time. Now Duggan plays it to Miniti, and then they've worked it well, so there's a bit of space for Carona. Clure coming inside, had to beat one defender, didn't beat Jackson though. And now, Bozanic, nice ball for Stewart, Manini's across, but doesn't stop Stewart, who has two to aim at and has played it over both of them. Now Cabezas, and flags up, flags up, and the decision is, uh, Cabezas did not keep that in play. Go again, win it out, throw it down the line. And now the Spartans are near halfway. with the latest set piece. Winkler, nice flick on. And Manini heading towards the edge of the box. But now Winkler out wide, and she was quick enough to win a corner kick. Is 
the delivery. And Minette rises highest and scores. That corner kick right on the money, straight onto Emily Minette's forehead. And she takes advantage. She scored for three consecutive games now. And just before the break, Manly United looking in a, to be in a great position. It's 2-0 to Manly over the Spartans. Absolute textbook header from Minette there. So, I'm going to have to update my scoring streak stats for Manly forwards, as that should be Simonson's, and is. Daisy Arrowsmith and Emily Minette now have scored for the last three games in a row. So, so think about the achievements of those two who are <coughs> Minette leading at the point of attack, Manly centre forward, and Daisy Arrowsmith, the most advanced of. Manly's midfield trio. Well, last weekend it was an Emily Minette swerving strike deep into stoppage time, which earned Manly a point against Spirit. And Arrowsmith had opened the scoring in that game at the Arctic Circle. And then and two rounds ago, as there's the free kick conceded by Carroll. That time it was. Trying to remember what happened between Manly and Tigers, but yes, Emma Minette scored scored Manly's first equaliser against the Tigers. Daisy Arrowsmith scored Manly's second equaliser against her old club, by the way. And then it was another former Tiger, Gemma Woolley, in the final 10 minutes, who scored the winning goal. So yeah, that was round three. Very, very dramatic stuff by Manly United. Now Jackson, well, it, Winkler wasn't where she thought she was. Uh, luckily for the host, Cabezas is round to cover and played back to the keeper. Now Jackson wants options. And nice tackle again from Cabezas. Now Biasi. back to go forward, if that makes sense. Now, well, Minette's in behind again, and three of three of her teammates with her tried to find, tried to slide it across the box. Tegan Biasi have made a nice run. They will settle for a corner. final minute of normal time for this first half. Is there a third goal for Manly United coming up? They scored off their last corner. It's into a similar area. This time it's Winkler getting her head to it. Jackson eyes up, puts it back into the middle. So Gilbane will be free. Oh, well, that's why she was open. She was offside. Of course, no fourth official in this competition. So, in fact, no points. Wondering how much time added on there will be because Mia Velarde has blown the whistle. And it's looking great for the hosts at half time because Manly United leading by two goals to nil over Blacktown Spartans. No point of me talking because that's everything I was going to say anyway. This is Eric Sabihana on the mic for the Football News FL's YouTube page. We'll take a short break, about 10 minutes or so, and then be back for the second half. Score is currently Manly United 2, Blackdown Spartans nil.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the second half of Football New South Wales coverage of NPL Women's New South Wales for the 2024 season. We're at Cromer Park. Eric Subihana here with the commentary. And Manly United, the home team, looking great as we're about to enter the second stanza. They're leading by two goals to nil against Blackhound Spartans. And the first two goals coming from a couple of players starting to build scoring streaks. Daisy Arrowsmith opened the scoring just before the quarter hour mark for Manly. And then Emily Minette scoring a few minutes before halftime to make it 2 0. Both Arrowsmith and Minette have scored for three games in a row as there's a whistle from Mia Balade. Away we go for the second half. Uh, we'll check as Gilbain looks for Stewart to uh, check to see if any halftime subs have been made uh, given the scoring. I'd be surprised if Manley had made a change. And after a quick scan of who's out there, I can reveal that. Well, can, sorry, I can confirm that Manly are as they were to begin the game. I'm just trying to do so for the away side, and then I might con confirm once again for those of you who uh, perhaps missed the start of the broadcast uh, the two sets of 11 players that are out there. Okay, so. Actually. Kilbane takes a quite a short throw towards Arrowsmith. Quickly goes down by Melissa Ansad, who, in fact, after being at centre forward for the first 45 minutes, is now at least for the time being on the left wing for the Spartans. And so I can see that here there has been at least one substitution. Winkler getting there just ahead of Kitwala and Carly. So I did see number 32, which would mean Despina Vasiliadis is on the field. So at least one sub for the Spartans. And then you know, Stewart gets in the way and just goes for distance. There's Maniti beating Minette to the punch there. And it's Stewart, nice ball down the line for Minette. And again, she resumes a battle with Maniti. Uh, both hit the synthetic turf, but yeah, good to see neither of, them, neither of them particularly bothered by the contact. Arnold heads towards Gilbane, but that Ingsad takes over. Kavesas doesn't get her foot to it first, and now it's Winkler. Uh, through ball, and oh well, I don't think the flag was going to go up, and it was the new player, Vasiliadis. It really opened up for the touch was just heavy enough to allow Nicole Simonson in and she'll be grateful well that would have been a great start to the second half for the visitors that Vasiliadis couldn't reel it in okay now I think I know who Vasiliadis has replaced 99% sure I just need one more player to face the far post side of the field so I can yeah okay yeah. so Hope Clear is the player that's been replaced and there's been a little bit of a position switch in the Spartans' attack as well. Now Minette towards Biasi. And it's actually going to be a bit of a sore one for Maniti. So it's played forward and you know, Spartans might have been better so by playing it out. Because now Manly not really under an obligation to. Although now there's a stoppage. Corinne Winkler winning the free kick. And I reckon we're going to see the Spartans' physio on. Because it, that was a sore one for Maniti. And I think that contact... A collision with Tegan Biasi. So while we have a stoppage in play, I'll just um, run you through the man the manly lineup that's out there because it's the same one that started the game. So in goal, number one, Nicole Simonson. They're back four from left to right, number 12, Ariella Cabezas. Number 34, Corinne Winkler. Number three, Grace Arnold. And number two, Phoebe Gilbane. Three in midfield. Number six, Ruby Jackson. Number 20, Sian Bazanich. And number 16, Daisy Arrowsmith. And the three up front at centre forward, number nine, Emily Minette. She's flanked well, on the right by number five, Nicole Stewart. And on the left by number 11, Tegan Biasi. Now, well, I'm not sure how much this means. Uh, looks to be, Manini looks to be okay. I think I can see a smile on her face. So hopefully this means uh, that she'll be back on the 4 2 one. Now, I'm not sure how much body language means in this instance but just off screen Gemma Woolley is I think starting her warm-up 
B it's just over Biasi's head, that set piece from Jackson. Now she might be in an aerial challenge. And now, now she's in a foot race. But now Spartans, potential for the counterattack. So Gilbane's got to hurry here. And she's dealt with the situation. And Simonson gets it as far away from the manly goal as possible. Danielle, I think, had it, almost had it nicked off by Arrowsmith. Biasi couldn't run because of you know, good defending from Charlotte Owen there. Arnold finding Cabezas. Now, oh, great burst of speed from Biasi there. Now, Minette, a little bit of room. Once she walked, Biasi wanted the return ball. Did not get to her. Now, another go to Simonson. Simonson looking for options. So she wants to avoid just playing it long, and then Vasiliadis was quick, but not quick enough to stop the pass out. Simonson gets another go. This time a bit longer. And that's a nice ball to Cabezas, who has room to run forward. Great ball to Nicole Stewart. She's got the speed to beat the defense, but not the keeper. Norton's out of position, though. And I think Stewart's looking for support. She gets it with Biasi. There's orange jerseys in the way, though. And then the cross, well, it wouldn't have mattered. That's offside. nice the Spartans trying the high press again but they worked it so that Bazanish could face forward and now Maniti back on the field has the sprint and yeah she looks all right for speed although it's been cleared into her Stewart has an open goal Nicole Stewart what a save from Norton here's Minette and Minette she's going to try and walk it in and it's been cleared off the line last ditch stuff Spartans keeping the score at 2-0 it's almost a disaster with Norton slamming the ball into Maniti Norton did brilliantly and was very brave to uh, almost smother Nicole Stewart's shot AFL style just diving on both the ball and Stewart's foot at the same time and then Minette denied apologies I'm not sure who that was might have been Charlotte Owen looked like it was a, the right back running into the center at the very last moment and whoever it was a very vital intervention for the Spartans now it's another corner kick Manly players begin their runs. up grandstand side for Spartans Corona down the line to Ngsad now Winkle using all of a high to head it down but only as far as Vasiliadis and then that's a nice tackle from Winkler before clearance is charged down to Spartans perhaps buoyed by that goal line clearance now they're trying to halve the deficit Ngsad again cuts inside I think that's off Jackson Simonson is out and out relatively comfortably to claim the ball Now, well, Stewart trying to pounce on the Spartans' defensive header. And then again, Charlotte Owen covering. So now I'm even more confident that it was her with the goal line clearance. 
a couple of minutes ago. Short down the line for Stewart and then Saad charging into her. And I think that'll that foul, that decision will be against Diana Corona. Okay, by the way, apologies on. I should remind you of the Spartans lineup. I'll try and do it after this set piece, which Jackson has taken and well, that uh, Norton didn't want to risk a back pass, so she just pleaded towards the center circle. And Vasiliadis has beaten Arnold to the ball. Vasiliadis is going to run all the way in here. Cabeza is trying to get in the way, and Vasiliadis has, oh, the Spartans fans, that half second where they thought it had gone in, but it's one of those ones where it hits the side netting, and it was the outside of the goal, not the inside. Well, that is a lot more than a warning for Manly United because. Well, it was a reminder of one of my favorite sayings in attacking set pieces, an opportunity for both teams to score. Norton just put a foot through it. Vasiliadis won the 50-50 on halfway. She was in, and she nearly pulled the goal back for the visitors. Contact from here. Corona has clattered Gilbane. And Velarde, our referee Mia Velarde, trying, doing her best to keep the cards in the pocket, but I do suspect that's the last warning. Jackson plays the set piece. Winkler's up there, gets ahead to it, but that'll be easy for Norton. Breath there after that. The Spartans nearly pulled the goal back. Arrowsmith towards Gilbane. And I think that might spin towards Minette. Norton's out off a line as well. And yep, she's done just enough. And she knew she knew where she was, right at the edge of the box, but definitely inside it. It's more good goalkeeping. And despite conceding twice, Anna Norton's had a good game in the Spartans' goal. She wanted to cut inside and I think it didn't quite take the ball with her, but now she's heading more centrally and won the free kick. So great persistence from Biasi. Jackson set piece coming up gets the touch on it and then I think you can see what Winkler was trying to do help it on there were runners beyond her her attempted flick on was blocked and then uh, 
Stewart, oh, I thought the wrong part of her boot there. I think the referee was trying to play advantage. Ends up as a goal kick. Oh, yes, the, just in case you missed the top of the broadcast, uh, the, the 11 Spartans players on the field right now. Number one, the keeper is Anna Norton. Back four from left to right, number 26, Diana Carona. Number two, Chantal Maniti. Number 17, Brittany Duggan. And number three, Charlotte Owen. Two central midfielders, or the two deeper lying midfielders, are number 12, Charlotte Carroll, and number eight, Helena Daniela. And the attacking midfield spot, number 11, Kitwal Amkali. On the right wing, number 31, Alyssa McKenzie. On the left wing now is number 27, Alyssa Ingsad. And at centre forward, number 32, Despina Vasiliadis. Uh, Stewart towards Biasi, and now Biasi. It's Bazanich, and she's hit the outside of the post. So it was nearly a third goal. Uh, Tegan Biasi, shown good endeavour this afternoon. Starting on the left wing, but always trying to run inside whether that's with the ball or as a off the ball supporting runner uh, she didn't get a shot away but she made enough of a nuisance of herself to kind of set it up for Bazanich and Bazanich has smacked the outside of the post I think we might see a Manly double sub coming up soon Gemma Woolley's getting instructions from Manly United assistant Lockie Panetta and Caitlin, Caitlin Jarvie or Pommy as she's almost usually universally known she's already got the bib off So just go long towards Arnold and Nardle heads it more sideways than forward second chance to work it into the box for the Spartans Here's Owen is she quick enough no she's not will not keep that in play now yep there's the signal from Tom Hopley we are going to see a manly double sub and once again so nice to be behind the technical areas certainly don't get that opportunity at every ground Okay, so Grace Arnold, one of the so players making way. Tegan Biasi! So, yes, just to confirm that double sub. On number, on number seven, Gemma Woolley, replacing number 11, Tegan Biasi. So that will be an attack. Looks like should be on the left wing. And also number 13, Caitlin Pomijabi, replacing number three, Grace Arnold. And had noticed that the manly skipper, Ruby Jackson, has gone straight into central defense, taking Grace Arnold's spot alongside Corinne Winkler. And that will allow Jabi to be in her usual midfield spot. So she will be in midfield in Manly's midfield trio with Sian Bozanic and Daisy Arrowsmith. Surrounded by orange jerseys, and it ends up at Nkali's feet. Tries from a long way out. Don't think it would have troubled Simonson. Winkler wasn't taking any risks. Got her forehead in the way. Uh, there's the cross from Carroll, and it's a dangerous one as well. It's missed by everyone, and there were multiple runners at the far post, and they've kept it in play with Simonson out of the goal. Winkler lunges, and it falls to Javi. So Manly survive, and Javi with the nutmeg as well. She won't get it, the ball on the other side, but Manly allowed to step up there.
Nice to take a break there, let the crowd fill our, fill our mics for a bit. Of course, you do have three substitution windows, plus half time, but Manly didn't use a sub at half time, so Manly can make a maximum of three subs remaining, and they have another two opportunities, maximum of two opportunities in which to make those subs. And now Woolley. Uh, almost her first involvement off the bench. She's been outpaced by McKenzie, who just plays it over the touchline for safety. Of course, Gemma Woolley has one of the more interesting professions amongst NPL players. She's a cosmetic doctor. Not a cosmetic surgeon, that's different. She's non-surgical, but... Gemma Woolley, when, 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 she's try, when she's not trying to make... Things look good on the field for a team. She's trying to make people look good. Now, man, it's, it's been a bit frantic at times in this second half, so as they're trying to see this game out, yet yeah, stuff like that, just slowing things down by. Passing it back to the keeper when they're under relatively little pressure might just be what they need as they try and uh, manage the situation and earn what would be their third victory of the season. And a pretty good return if it were to be three wins from their opening five games. Actually, did that even go? Uh, so the decision has gone in play and back out. Of course, if it hadn't gone in at all, then it uh, would be take two, so to speak. You just get to th try throw it again from the same spot. Gilbane just uh, she was looking to play it down the line. And inside, good pressing didn't uh, allow her that chance. <coughs> nice touch. Oh, almost the heel from Minette, the supporting run from Javi. Now she's given Woolley something to chase. And Duggan is actually doing what? Doing the favorite thing among central defenders, shepherding the ball out for a goal kick. Long goal kick. Nice touch from Carly before she's pressured by Biasi. The back heel, well, right idea, but Arrowsmith read it better than the Spartans in the vicinity. Gilbane going back to Simonson. Now it's worked towards Winkler. Now Cabezas. And Cabezas. Well, she was overlapping a long way forward from left back. Just didn't quite sit for her because always oh, it might have been a nice opportunity for an overlapping run. Back it goes once again to the goalkeeper. And Winkler once again finding space to provide the option for Simonson. Spartans, they've made one sub. Of course, there's been a Vasiliadis who's gone closer than anyone else for the visitors today. Uh, close in turn. By scoring, I mean. Oh, closer to scoring, I meant. Uh, she's the only sub that's been used so far by Spartans. Winkler. Oh, yeah, she tried to sh shepherd it out of play, but that's... Good work, actually, by the Spartans to win a corner kick. And yes, just briefly, the other bench options available. Uh, we could see in the remainder of this game, the Michaela Kent, the backup keeper of Spartans. There's also Isabel Wilson, Angelique Lynch, Poppy Channing, and Alana Putitsa. Speaking of subs, I can see Alexia Forner. 
She's getting instructions from Lockie Panetta. But the corner comes in and Simonson didn't get to it at the first go. Here's a chance and it's in off the inside of the post. So Spartans have half the deficit. And Elena Danielle with a lovely strike. The corner caused havoc. And you see that persistence to chase what could have been a lost cause. They've won a corner kick and the visitors have scored from it. So it's now Manly United 2, Blacktown Spartans 1. About 20 minutes left in this game. Manette chasing this one. It's sent towards the center circle. And then Jackson and playing it forward for Manly. Now Stewart, always a win willing runner. Tried to press Corona, but it's the good option from the Spartans' goal scorer, Danielle. And now this uh, inside is quick enough to keep it in play. And it's a little bit open now. Spartans in the ascendancy. Cutting inside is inside and Winkler. But a boot to which he'll need to play at it again. And off the outside of the boot. Oh, that could have been awkward for Bazanich. Now it's out towards Stewart. That's a nice ball for Stewart. So it's Duggan who has the sprint. Stewart got to it first, but who's it off? Ah, yeah. The signal by Isabel Witkowski off Stewart. And in fact, it might be Nicole Stewart's last involvement. So as we can see another double sub. Field, eight, and number 17, Sienna And making their way for the field is number five, Nicole Stewart, and number nine, Emily Manette. Yeah, what he said. So we'll see the junior Matilda, Sienna Dale. And actually, I did see in action in the reserve game game played before this one, which Manly United won 2 0, by the way. Now she gets about 15 to 20 minutes or so. Nicole Stewart looking to be the direct replacement on the right wing, replacing Nicole Stewart. Now, Alexia Fawn has gone into midfield for Manly. That means Daisy Arishmith is now at the center forward position. And if you're a long term watcher of this competition, NPL Women's New South Wales, whether it's with you know that has been historically where Daisy Arishmith has usually played as a centre forward, whether that's for uh, Northern Tigers or Bankstown City. Or if you're a real NPL women's OG playing up front for North Shore Mariners. And Dale into the action. Now Jarby tried to tried a little shimmy, but it was a good tackle. Now Gilbane's got a hold down R2 and Gilbane, that's a nice tackle. Who's it off last? That's good. Wants a touch off inside, she's not getting it. So Spartans with an attacking throw in. So Corona, forward from left back. It's cushioned by Mkali back to Corona, tying to the middle. And Cabezas challenging I think with McKenzie. Cabezas ends up clearing it. Now, that, that might break for Jarby. So Jarby has three in front of her. It's good position from Daniela to prevent at least the immediate pass. Now, Dale is not quick enough. She's quick, but couldn't keep that in play. Of course, Sienna Dale. I mentioned she's part of the junior Matildas. And... And we'll wait and see if she's selected for the upcoming Asian Under-17 Women's Championship. I think, believe that starts in May. So she's uh, play, pretty much played in all of the qualifiers so far. 
uh, Sienna Dale uh, for the Junior Matildas. So now we're just waiting selection for that final squad. Been a great experience for her. She's still only 16 from memory. And uh, if she has turned 17, that would have been only recently. Uh, she's been able to tour overseas. I know she's uh, been to South Korea with the Junior Matildas. And also Thailand, if memory serves me correctly. So yeah. uh, it does show you the opportunities that football can give you, even at that even at her early age, she's been able to tra travel and see a little bit of the world while playing football. Now, Fauna with a challenge. Woolley back to Bazanich. Now, Cabezas. Cabezas again, back to Winkler. Bain, of course, Spartans now are at this stage of the game. They've got to take a few more risks. So they're certainly pressing high. I do wonder if we'll see some subs as well, some fresh legs to aid their high pressing in this the closing stages of the game. And now that makes its way from Simonson to Cabezas. Bazanich. Now Woolley dropping a little bit deeper to help the passing move. And well, Spartans, they might have a chance now. It breaks from Manley. And there's a little bit of space here. Woolley tries to thread it through. Dale running through the middle, trying to get between defenders. Sienna Dale, she's still got it. Big save. Here's Ara Smith, and she scored to give Manley a little bit of breathing room. It's Daisy Ara Smith's second goal of the game, and that's made it. Manly United 3, Blackout Spartans 1. Sienna Dale's persistence really made that. It broke for Arrow Smith. She finished. So we go. It was the time when, if you're having a one goal lead, you start to get a bit nervous. And. The Manly faithful now can breathe a little bit easier because of Daisy Arrowsmith's fourth goal of the season. Tom Hopley urging his team to Tom Hopley urging his team to chase every loose ball. Woolley, nice cushioned ball. Of course, Arrowsmith's on a hat trick now. And now Woolley instead she goes herself. And one hop. And potentially awkward. When ball when the ball bounces directly in front of the keeper, but that did not fool. Anna Norton. By the way, Mitt, all the commotion over uh, that goal that put Manly 3 1 up. Yeah, there was a substitution. So, number 38, Alana Putitsa, is on the field for the team in orange. So, now I've set myself a challenge. Can I figure out who Alana Putitsa replaced before the end of the game? I've got at least 12 minutes. If you haven't heard much of my commentary before, yeah, you'd think that's enough time, but hmm, we'll see. I'm just going to throw an early guess out there. I think the Spartans goal scorer, Hel goal scorer Helena Daniele is the player that's made way for Putitsa, I think. And Jarvi running beyond from midfield, couldn't cushion it for Gemma Woolley. Yes, uh, kind of. Bodies hitting the turf on the far post side of the field, but on we go in Spartans. And now that will be Gilbane facing forward. And Gilbane, she's getting a shout there, possibly from Woolley. And Woolley might have a chance here. It's Gemma Woolley, tries to lob the keeper, and it's about a yard or so wide of the post. Norton had stepped forward and realized she wasn't getting there. 
Woolley realized that, tried to lob it over the keeper. It was a nice attempt. And that goal, another goal from Gemma Woolley, would have been just what the doctor ordered, but not to be that time. who have, well, the fresh air legs, although, of course, as I mentioned earlier, she did play in the reserve grade game. But something I have noticed with the way Manly manage the, the senior teams, which, of course, is the reserve grade and the first grade team, Sienna Dale doesn't play the whole game in reserves. Basically, they're saving her, they're saving some energy for situations like this when they might need her pace off the bench. Now, it's a nice turn from Basiliadis, and then Jackson has had quite enough of that run from the number 32. Got everything in the way that time, did Ruby Jackson. And that'll be a Spartans throw as we're into the final 10 minutes. By the way, if you've missed any of this action, just a recap of how we got to this current scoreline 3 1 to Manly United. Manly opened the scoring in the 14th minute through Daisy Arrowsmith. A great individual effort that's worth. Going back on the stream after this one's done and uh, seeing what Arrowsmith did to open the scoring. Emily Minette made it 2-0 to Manly in the 41st minute. Spartans pulled the goal back in the 70th minute through Helena Danielle. Daniela, and then in the 77th minute, Daisy Arrowsmith made it 3-1. And she's run in beyond Jumbo Woolley here, who instead plays it wide to Dale. Dale heading towards the byline. Dale, she did keep it in, and it's somehow gone through all those bodies. No Spartans player got a touch. It's threaded the needle between three Manly players who are looking uh, for a close-range finish. Yeah, that's why, that's why Manly like bringing Dale off the bench. You can do stuff like that in the late stages of games against tiring defenders. Now Winkler, certainly it's, that's, that got the Spartans fans excited, one particular Spartans fan, and it will be a corner kick. So that, well, that's, yes, and Phoebe Gilbane knew where that was going, had the hands up, Universal Singapore, let it run, and there we go, corner direct into the side netting. Of course, you know, this, uh, Two other games running concurrently as Leah Burton comes back after being warmed up, so she might get a little bit of a run in this first grade game. And if she is to do so, that would be the fifth and final substitution. So Tom Hopley would be, well, not quite emptying the bench because you get to pick six subs, but making the maximum number of subs allowed. Now, Kvassas plays it forward and then Duggan... Heading it as far forward as she can. Supporting run from Javi. Uh, Woolley might have been offside. Half clearance. And Bazanic. And uh, Bazanic tries from range. And Norton saves comfortably. <laughs> By the way, I suppose I... Thanks to one of my wonderful group chats. I won't give spoilers of uh, the goal, the in terms of the scores in the other games being played, same time as this one, Sydney Olympic versus Bulls FC Academy and Glades Ravens versus University of New South Wales. But there are quite a few goals. Let's just leave it at that. And of course, you can switch over to those on the Football New South Wales YouTube page, but I would like you to do it after this game is done. Now, it should be Simonson's. 
Hayes. Now I think I'm not going to try any risks in terms of playing it out from back short. So yep, Simonson just goes towards halfway. Cabezas finds Aerosmith and now Aerosmith's got a couple of options but it's good stepping forward out of central defence I think by Duggan. Close down the angle, block that pass. Now Dale, she is tackled, but she has given up on it. A little bit too enthusiastic, though, with that defending. And it will be a Spartan free kick. Well, I was actually trying to see, have a little sneak peek at what was going in the other games by the YouTube, by the Football News Supplies YouTube page, and then I clicked on clicked on the, this game. I was like, well, I already know what's happening in this game. Yeah, good one, Eric. Yeah, that's quite a lot of goals for you to watch in the other games. Goals all over the place. Four here and, um, yes, some goals elsewhere. Let's just say that. Jackson towards Gilbane. Now Dale with the return pass towards Jarvi. He's Winkler stepping out from the back end. Oh, didn't get to it first, but... Stop McKenzie making a meaningful contribution. Now uh, Fauna. And now it's Winkler again. Now Alexia Fauna. Well, that, that'll work out for Dale, and she loves running at defenders. And might open up for her. Woolly in front of her. Dale, and said she goes from way out, and that wasn't too far away. Oh, that would have been one, a contender for goal of the season if it snuck inside that post. Not too far away. And Sienna Dale, a local product, a Wakehurst junior, certainly tigerish in her place since she's come on the field. Smith furthest forward for Manley. Uh, it's quite deep, and uh, the Spartans back line giving her quite a cushion. <coughs> now again, Winkler, nice ball towards Arrowsmith, but then Duggan with more no good defensive work. So, uh, we've spoken about late drama, at least Manley have scored late goals in their last two games. Can the Spartans do something to uh, make it a little bit more interesting in the closing stages? Now, well, it might break here for Ungsad, and player who has scored four times in her last three games to be the Spartans top scorer at this early stage of the 2024 season. Didn't get the contact right that time. I think there was, to be to be fair to Manley, they did get, I think, a defender close to her. So inside was under pressure as he tried to strike the goal. might just do a brief plug for streams coming up in the next couple of days. Women's football streams that you can watch on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. There's four NPL Women's New South Wales games tomorrow at 4.45pm. Football New South Wales Institute versus RPL Leichhardt called by Dave McDonald. Two games at 5pm tomorrow. MacArthur Rams versus Northwest Sydney Spirit and Sydney University versus Illawarra Stingrays. And 5.30pm tomorrow Northern Tigers versus Emerging Jets called by Annabelle Banfield great addition to our media team both in terms of commentary she's also writing some articles for us as well women in sports media love to see it then on wednesday 3rd of april 
from the second tier, second division, League One Women's Sutherland Strikers versus Interlions called by Melissa Musket. 8 p.m. kickoff Wednesday, 3rd of April, that one. Sutherland versus Inter. Then Thursday, the 4th of April. NPL Women's New South Wales action from the South Coast. Illawarra Stingrays versus the Gladesville Ravens. Now, Dale going from way out at Sienna Dale with some magic. What a strike from the junior Matilda. She made just enough space to go from range with a supposedly weaker left foot. Well, it didn't look weak that time. It's a thunderbolt, and that adds a lot of gloss to the scoreline here in the 90th minute for Manly United. They're leading Blacktown Spartans by four goals to one. Home fans can finally breathe a sigh of relief as Leah Burton replaces Sian Pazanic. Dale skips past the tackle, skips past another tackle. Oh, actually, I think credit to Mkali, who think disrupted her just enough. And cushions it well for Lexi Fauna. A player who, by the way, is, uh, Lexi Fauna came up through the NPL Capital Football Competition and now is an NPL New South Wales player. Kind of, kind of a theme that's become more common in recent years. Players coming from outside the Sydney metropolitan area to kind of for the next stage of their career. Lexi Fauna is one of those. Dill Bain just going to slow things down and settle for the throw in. Can't flick it past Musard. Gilbane perfectly positioned um, near the touchline. Good turn from Vasiliadis. And there's a couple of her teammates with her. Putitsa. Now Charlotte Owen coming forward from right back. And she'll try from range. Simonson not bothered at all by that long range attempt. There's the whistle from Mia Velarde. And it's three wins in the opening five rounds for Manly United. They've defeated Blackhand Spartans by four goals to one. And that completes an undefeated day for Manly United. They've remained undefeated in the top six grades against Blackhand Spartans. Great day for the team from the Northern Beaches. So in case our mics didn't pick that up, let's recap today's action. Man the United defeating Blacktown Spartans by four goals to one, their third win in the opening five rounds of the season. Daisy Arrowsmith got the scoring underway for Manly in the 14th minute, and Emily Minette made it 2-0 to Manly a few minutes before half time. Helena Danielle for Spartans made it interesting with a, just a bit over 20 minutes to go, making the score 2-1, but Manly finished strong. Daisy Arrowsmith scored her second of the day to make it 3-1 to Manly in the 77th minute. And then in the 90th minute, a stunner from Sienna Dale, a contender for goal of the season, made it 4-1 to Manly United. That was the final score. So we hope to see you, well, we hope you join us for tomorrow's coverage of the MPL Women's New South Wales competition. You've got the choice of four games, those being Football New South Wales Institute versus RPL Leichhardt, the Carthur Rams versus North West Sydney Spirit, Sydney University versus Illawarra Stingrays, or Northern Tets, North Northern Tigers versus Emerging Jets. But for now, on behalf of Football New South Wales and our camera operator for today, Joshua, this is Eric Subihano signing off for the Football New South Wales YouTube page. Take care, enjoy the Easter weekend, stay safe, have plenty of good vibes, great coffee, sick tattoos and razzlers, and may you see youngsters score plenty of bangers this year. See you next time.